I said don't open till Christmas Day. I said do not open until Christmas Day. You're one of them people, aren't you? Put presents under the tree. You'll be there feeling it. Seeing what's there. Okay, well, if you're that type of person, you're that type of person. There's not a lot you can do about it, I suppose. Here we go, enjoy it. We're on. Do I look like a bloke who's been up 10 minutes? I'm showered. I'm out with the dog. I'm shaved. I need a haircut. I'll do that later. It's uh, Thursday before Christmas. Christmas is on Monday. What date does that make it? Stop. Sort myself out. What date does that make it? If Monday's the 25th. 21st, 21st of December. Four days to go. Are you ready for it? I'm having a running joke with Shelley about how I need to save Christmas. I need to save Christmas. And it's got to freak her out a little bit, to be honest with you. She's freaking out a lot, actually. I need to save Christmas. And the reason being is actually, hang on a minute, he's, having his, uh, he's doing his thing. I'll come back to you in a sec. Part of my stand-up routine when I'm at work is uh, I talk about Christmas presents when I was a kid. I talk about the Bionic Man. Do you remember the Bionic Man? I love the Bionic Man. Steve Austin, amazing. And I got the Bionic Doll. And I thought it was the best thing ever. He had that thing in his arm, remember? And you could look through the back of his head and you could see across the street. I'm getting so excited. It was a magnifying glass. That's all it was. It was a magnifying glass. But I was excited. And then it's like, what do you remember from Christmas? And you know, I see people post it on Facebook. You get a lot of like captions, phrases and stuff like that on Facebook, which is just utter garbage for me. It's just like stuff that should be on somebody's wall, you know, on a piece of wood hung up in a kitchen in Surrey. That just like means nothing. But one of them that I do remember is, which tends to stick with me is that you, you never really remember what you got when you were seven, eight, six, seven, eight, or nine years of age for Christmas. But what you do remember is the feeling of coming downstairs, of seeing the presents all lined up, the feeling of, you know, excitement of when you uh, see that Santa's been. And it's the feeling that for me is most the most important part. Now when I was a kid, it wasn't. When I was a kid, it was the most, uh, it was all about the materialistic stuff. The more materialistic, the better. That's what it was about for me. It wasn't about uh, the feeling. You don't realize that until you look back anyway, I don't think, until you're older. But it was uh, now, I think this time around in a relationship, I've seen that it's, uh, it's more about generating a feeling rather than uh, materialistic stuff. So, as you can see with Shelley, when you look at the, these, these just a little bit reminiscent actually about the feeling that it generates. <laughs> Been a little bit busy. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, and that face. <laughs> oh, he's so sweet. <sighs> Let me cry. <laughs> My God. <laughs> More than anything else. And uh, even now talking about it, you can see, even though I've only been up 10 minutes, it actually puts a smile on my face. Take a look at this. Two, three. There you go. We're not married, but we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're not married. It's been amazing. Thank you. And look at this room. It's, it's very loud, this room. The room is very, very it's loud. Very loud. It's gonna... Do any of you remember these? It's generating that feeling. You're always on the wrong side, mate. And that feeling is most probably something that I, you never forget. The feeling that I give to whether it be Shelley or whether it be my kids, it's generating that feeling that's more important than anything else. And that feeling is, doesn't have to even cost a lot, which is a really, really nice thing. That's much for the nicest part about it, I think. 
at the cost because it's about the thought that goes into it or well, for the last month you know when you think about what do you need to get somebody for Christmas what do you need to get a present for Christmas I've been struggling I've really been struggling because the, don't get me wrong the materialistic stuff that's easy I've done that I'd had that all done by the beginning of December you know I'd spent X amount of euros I've bought you know X amount of presents I've bought some materialistic things that will um, that Shelley will be happy with and you know she'll uh, she'll open them up and she'll put a smile on her face so knowing what Shelley wanted for Christmas was easy because she pretty much told us uh, without even realizing she told us so I went out and managed to buy that you know and I spent like as I say I spent X amount of euros on presents for her that's like materialistic presents and I think she'll like them but I didn't get anything for Christmas I didn't get anything for Christmas you know like the actual spirit of Christmas where you can generate the feel of what you know the feeling that people remember Christmas by and that's why I was struggling so the conversation to Shelley was I needed to save Christmas I need to save Christmas and then I found it the other day I always panic about that bit about what what can you get someone that generates the feeling rather than the materialistic gents if you are in a relationship and you're just buying the materialistic stuff just change it change it think about something that'll create an emotion because that's what you're after I think anyway I'm not a love guru by the way <laughs> you imagine amongst other things when you know you know you know but it's not about materialistic stuff it's about actually getting a motive getting something that creates emotion and that's what I've been struggling with and then I found it actually I found it about a week ago and I found it just through believe it or not through cleaning I was actually um, I was cleaning out the bureau in the house and uh, I didn't start off to do that that day by the way it just happens you just all of a sudden I, just, I don't sit still so I opened up to the bureau next thing you know I'm cleaning it and three drawers down I came across every single CD and DVD that Shelley had ever done where she was on the telly Shelley on telly uh, the DVDs with the music sorry the CDs with her old band the brigade and I came across that and I went that's what I can do because we can't watch it because they're on CD and for somebody like me I think it'd be a simple task just transfer the CDs DVDs transfer them onto a pen drive onto a USB stick sort them into a file stick them on a computer throw them onto YouTube yeah, I thought that as well. Trouble is, CDs now are redundant. DVDs are redundant. The, the Apple stuff don't actually come with that. So I had to dig out an old laptop from underneath the uh, underneath the bureau, covered in dust. Try to open that up. My own laptop, password protected. Do I know the password? Not a chance. Totally forgot. So luckily. We've got a shop over here called BGR Solutions. And I thought, you know, this is most probably going to be a 10 minute job. If I give them the CDs and the DVDs, they can just copy and transfer them onto a pen drive for me. I can take the pen drive, put that onto my computer. I can make some sort of collage up from, uh, from the time she was on the TV and from the time, you know, she was with the old band, the brigade, and create some sort of program, you know, some sort of film for her, like reminisce to create the feeling. In other words, I can save Christmas. Me think it's a 10 minute job. Well, three days later, still not sorted. I was like, what's going on? Thank you to Ralphie, by the way. Ralphie down at BGR Solutions, who did a cracking job trying to help me and kept us informed. But it was no mean task. It really wasn't. I dropped the stuff off of Ralphie at BGR Solutions, expecting, on the Monday, expecting to wait just about an hour and then go back and pick it up. Turns out it was going to take longer than that. Went back the following day, saying no, we're struggling. And I'm struggling with a DVD-R, not a DVD-RW, which is you can't copy a DVD-R, well, you can copy a DVD-RW. And that was the biggest issue, and I knew it would be. Three days, three days it's took them to get this. Three days it's took them to get this on a, on a pen drive for me. So I took the pen drive, Eventually, thank you very much, BGR Solutions. I took the pen drive, brought it home, 
and I was excited to put it on to the computer to see. And it's been in plain sight actually in front of Shelley for the last uh, 24 hours. But she doesn't really know the computer, she doesn't really understand what I do. So the pen drive can just stay there. And uh, she hasn't got a clue about it. But the present's been right in front of your eyes, Shelley. It's been right under your eyes. Eventually I managed to get the bit where it's MP4, which is the, uh, the video stuff. I clicked on it and opened to open it. And guess what, it wouldn't play. So I've gone to Shelley, like I'm trying to save Christmas to the point, I've saved Christmas. But I said Christmas isn't saved yet, it's not saved. Because I couldn't get it to open and play. So in the end, once again I've had to call in help with somebody else. And this time it was the help of uh, Shelley's son Calvin. So I called Calvin up. I sent him a message saying you're free to talk. And then I called him up. And he asked what the crap was. I said look I've seen you at your fifth birthday party. He's like what? So I showed him the screen of what I had. The screenshot and he's like I remember that. I've been looking for that. He's even actually emailed the BBC archive to see if he could get this. And it's to no avail. So this is how rare this thing is. It's 25 years old. Uh, 20, yeah, about 24, 25 years old. And it's, uh, it's Shelley appearing with Jay McDonald on Stars in Their Eyes. And it's, I think it's most, it could be Shelley's, one of Shelley's first TV uh, performances, unless it was Opportunity Knox, that was, I don't know. But eventually, I've managed to get it. And I'm now in the process of putting it all together to give her as a Christmas present. I'm not crying, I've got something in the eye. Um, to give it as a Christmas present. Now this is the thing about this present. This, out of all, all the presents she's gonna get, this present is gonna cost me the least amount in monetary value. It's costing the most amount in time and hourly labor trying to get it all sorted but it's costing the least in monetary value but I know or I'm thinking it'll create that feeling but what I think I've done is I think I've caught the feeling so in other words I think I've saved Christmas because that to me is the most important part is generating that feeling so I've been winding Shelley up all week saying I need to save Christmas I need to save Christmas and it's winding her off the clock it really is well, you just come in now. What did, what did you say to me? Have you saved Christmas? Have you saved Christmas? What do you know about me saving Christmas? You just keep told me for days that you're saving Christmas, but that's about all I know. <laughs> what are you worried you? Like? You haven't got a clue, have you? No, not at all. I bought you a coat. Uh, no, I showed I showed somebody today, and they went, "Oh, oh, don't say that, Lewis. Come on." <laughs> What's this face? Let's go back to the vlog. So what I thought about doing was getting this together and showing it on Christmas Day and then filming the reaction. But ladies, filming a woman who's just got up in a night gear with no makeup on and her hair all over the place while she's hanging on to a cup of coffee isn't the feeling that I'm trying to get and I, won't think, I don't think you'd be appreciative. I don't think any woman would be appreciative of me generating that feeling for her. So that's the reason why I've not done it. But what I will do is, I'm gonna put this out, most probably later on today. I'm gonna to let you see the video now. I'm gonna put it at the end of this here. I'm gonna let you share the feeling and see what Shelley was like when she was first on TV, Stars in Their Eyes with Jane McDonald, 20 odd years ago. And you're just gonna to have to trust me on the next one. I'll tell you how she reacted to it and whether I managed to save Christmas, because that's what it's about. There's a couple of footnotes I need to put in this one though. If you're living on the island and you're watching this before Christmas and you see this, do us a favour, don't spoil it. You can tell Shelley that Rick saved Christmas because that'd freak her out. Because that'd freak her out completely. But don't tell her why and how. Just keep that secret amongst ourselves, okay? Welcome to Star for a Night, a new series that showcases just some of the country's top singing talent. And believe me, there's a lot of it. <laughs> Next on our list.
us tonight is Joanne. She was relaxing at her son's fifth birthday party when we called to tell her the news. Now there's always an odd unexpected guest at the party, but this one took the cake. So we're all singing happy birthday uh, and then Jin comes round the corner and it was complete. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, cheers. You're yeah, through to star for an ice. Yeah. Even now, it's still, whoa, <laughs> still a bit much. Dad was absolutely ecstatic, and my mum was just over the moon. I sang for the first time when I was 16 at my dad's birthday party, um, and he's always wanted me to sing. Don't know where I found the courage from. I got up and, and sang The Power of Love. I hope I do well because of the Northeast clubs because they have done so much and they taught me everything that I could ever want, want to know. I've been singing in clubs for 10 years now and I think I've, I've done me time. <laughs> my mum was always telling me to get out of black trousers. <laughs> I live in black trousers and I had an idea of wearing something really different. It's very nice, very nice. I think I was born to perform <laughs> and that is what I'm really looking forward to walking out and actually performing. And we're looking forward to watching her perform tonight. From Tyna Weir, Joanne Shelley. Oh, I don't know about your mum, but I think you look stunning. What do you like? Do you no, like your new look? Hey, look I at do. this. Scaffolding and everything. <laughs> Let's go and wake up the judges now. Do you know, have you noticed, every time you and I get together, there's a party. I <laughs> will. I like it. Oh, hi. 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 Tamsin, Joanne has a great sense of humour, as you saw from the film. 
you think she should incorporate that in her act? I think you could incorporate it if you were looking at doing musicals. Yeah. See a bit of singing and acting and dancing all in one go. It really, I mean, that's what musicals call for, really. Yeah. But it's one of those voices that makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. It's mm. so rich and deep. And it's also got a lot of kind of tragedy in it. So mm. that's why it'd be perfect for musicals, I think. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of voice I've wished I had. Uh -huh. <laughs> Me too, love. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, how can Joanne make this transition now from the clubs into stardom? I'll tell you what, you don't have to wake me up. That was a fantastic performance. Oh, Brilliant. Great. It really was. Uh -huh. um, as far as I'm concerned, Joanne's already got one foot out of the clubs. Uh, she was great. She really was. She's a big girl with a big voice. Mm -hmm. A lot of the record companies are going for little girls now uh, with little voices. Britney Spears, people like that. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. Cheers. Barbara, she's really happy with her look. Yeah. Actually, so she should be. But is there any little tips that you can give her at all? No, no little tips from where I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, do you think she's got what it takes? Um, I think you've definitely got what it takes. It looks like you've been in the industry for years. Mm. So, yeah. Well, she has. All the way, yeah. Uh, you've been doing it for years, haven't you? Old. Old. Nigel, do you actually go out yourself and look for talent in clubs? Well, the music industry in general doesn't really go to the sort of clubs mm. uh, that Joanna probably sing in. I have to say, I found Gary Barlow in Wigan Working Men's Club I've singing <laughs> Phantom of the Opera or something yeah, awful that like club. that. You're going to get found on a show like this, not in Working Men's yeah. Club. Yeah. So you've done the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Joanne Shelley. The final message that I wanted to put out for this is... I'm not a preacher, I don't preach to anybody. But the one thing I do know for sure is Christmas isn't about materialistic things. The stuff that I've bought Shelley, she will have forgotten about those in a couple of years' time. They're nice, don't get me wrong, but she will have forgotten about them. But the feelings hopefully she'll get from this video is something that'll last for a long time. So, Shelley, when you watch this, Merry Christmas, pet. Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, I managed it. I managed to do it. See you later, pet. All the best. Thanks for watching, guys. Merry Christmas to you all. Have a great one, and uh, I'll make sure Shelley doesn't watch this until Christmas Day as well. All the best. See you soon. See you in the next one. Cheers, y'all.